Hey everybody, thanks for continuing on with the series. This is going to be video 21. In the last video we got mouse, uh, the mouse manager working so we can move the the camera around by middle clicking and dragging. And it works really well. It's pretty predictable. So in this next video what I want to do is take input instead of from the keyboard we're going to move the character around with the mouse having him uh, essentially go to uh, wherever we right click on the screen. I think that's all we're going to do for this video. Um, this By setting it up this way we're, we're going to get it ready for the A star pathfinding uh, algorithm. Uh, it will seamlessly kind of work in with the way that we've got it right. Uh, we'll have it by the end of the video. So an important function that we're going to have uh, in this is our follow path function that we're going to add to our player. So I will come here and we'll go into our player and let's actually create the follow path function first. Um, there's a few things that we're going to uh, to do to get this done, one of which is uh, add some functionality to our base object. So let me show you what I mean. So we're going to come into the base entity first. And we're going to create some functions down here. So one of these functions is going to be called get distance and it's going to take a some sort of entity just something with an X and a Y is really all that's going to matter so oops and it's going to be a function so in here we're going to set X distance equal to this dot X minus b dot x or entity dot x sorry then y dist is going to be this dot y minus entity dot y and keeping up with tradition let me whenever I remember it I like to use underscores there alright then we will return math math dot square root of x dist times x dist plus y dist times y dist and this will get us the distance the next thing that we're going to add is get angle 2 and this is going to function be a function that takes in an entity as well and it will return radians so it's going to have something very similar. Actually, we can even copy this. Copy, paste, because we're going to be using those. But we're going to instead return math.atan2 widest. Oh, and you know what? It is a bit different. We're going to switch these around. So we'll use the entities x and y first and this is just so that it returns the correct uh, radians instead of the exact opposite direction if we do the other way around it will give us the exact opposite direction and our character will go moving off to the exact opposite part of the screen and then x distance here and we will also we won't we won't do this yet we'll just leave these ones are all we need for now so get distance and get angle two. these are going to be important uh, to move our character where we need to go so let's come back down here and underneath the click we're actually going to also remove our keyboard input input for now. Alright, so our click 
we will have follow path and that's going to be there we are so in our tick now we are going to just uh, add this to our tick so right up at the top right where we had the input we're gonna say this dot follow path passing in delta time okay so what we will need is to check a uh, check a, va a variable that we're going to create called path so first off let's set path to nothing up at the top so I will come up here and we'll just set it this dot path is equal to a blank array now in follow path we'll say if let me get this all up here we'll say if this dot path dot length is greater than zero we're going to uh, we're going to try to get um, we're going to try to figure out where we're heading using the path uh, uh, the path objects that so we're going to create objects and push them into the array and they're going to have x and y positions that we then tell the uh, the player where to go. Uh, how or which angle to head to get there you'll see in a sec so we'll say var path is equal to uh, this dot path zero okay so now we'll say if this dot get distance path so path is going to have an x and y so we, we, we can actually use this function for it if it's greater than or equal to and let's just put 10 in here for now and then we'll also say and this dot time stopped is less than 0.5 and you'll see where this comes in in a moment so we're gonna set time stopped up here this dot time stopped equal to 0 We'll say if this dot get movement speed. Okay, so this is another thing that I uh, need to create. So let's do that. That is going to be in our creature class. So we'll go to our creature class. And we'll come right above we'll go right under actually right under get speed and we'll say get movement speed this is a function and what this is going to do is give us our current absolute speed regardless of direction so to do this we're going to create some variables I'm going to say this dot last x is equal to this dot current x or this dot x so to start out if we don't have a last x we'll just set it to the current position and this dot last y is equal to this dot current y or this dot y so if it's not set again we'll just set it to start this dot current x is equal to this dot x so every time we run through this All right. Uh, every time we run through this, it will be updating these. So var. All right, and then uh, speed 
x is going to be equal to this dot current x minus this dot last x. And same thing, var speed y is equal to this dot current y minus this dot last y. So as you can see, what we're going to do, we're essentially going to re just keep running this function. And every time we run this function, we're going to get the, the distance traveled, um, which will be technically our speed. So return, or the distance that we've traveled since the last check. Math dot square root speed x times speed x plus speed y times speed y. And this will give us, because we're going to be running this every every uh, tick when we're following a path, and if his speed becomes slow or less than a certain threshold, we're going to start timing it, uh, timing it, how long has he not been moving, and if he, oops, and if he hasn't been moving for long enough, then we're actually going to assume that something happened and we'll stop him um, so that he doesn't just continue to try to find that path. He'll move on um, and either stop or go to the next position. You'll see. Okay, so get movement speed is working. We can go into our player again. And we'll say if it's less than 0.2... So we'll make sure, I mean, he doesn't have to be completely stopped for it to start timing. Just when he, get, when he gets down to a really slow speed, then we're going to uh, increase this dot time stopped. So we're going to increase it by 1, but times delta time. <clears throat> so now... We'll say the angle is equal to this dot get angle two, and we're going to put path in there. This dot x move. Now this is where we're actually going to tell him to start moving. Is going to be equal to math dot cosine angle, and we're going to multiply this by this dot speed. So he'll be moving at whatever his speed is, um, and then we're going to times all that by delta time. So we get that consistent movement. So this dot y move is equal to math dot sine angle times this dot speed. And then multiply that by delta time. All right. Now that this is done, we're basically saying, hey, if he has a path, let's set our local path variable to that. Get the distance. Make sure that he's not already close enough to it. If he isn't close enough to it, or if he is close enough to it, which we need to put this here. There we go. Uh, if he is close enough to it, then we will do this stuff. So we'll be creating our else right here. So else this dot time stopped is going to be reset to zero. And this dot path dot splice, and we're going to splice the first uh, index out. So that will mean that the next time uh, we run the function, if we've already hit this path or whatever location we've clicked, then it will go to the next place that we clicked because we're just going to continually add um, positions to the path as we click uh, the paths array then we can say else if there's nothing left in here uh, this dot oh, uh, this is going to be inside of here yeah this will be inside here this dot x move is equal to zero and this dot y move is equal to zero. So if he hits, if there's no, no more paths, we're going to set him back to zero. Um, there's going to be some other things in here once we get going further, but for now, this is all we need to 
get him to follow a path. So if there's paths or if there's plot points, um, X and Y positions, and we push them into the paths array, and we're going to always check the first, whatever the first uh, index is. So if we click and it's at 30, 36 pixels by 25 pixels, um, he's going to go to that position. And as long as he's greater than 10 pixels away, he's going to continue to try to get to it. And you'll see that's what the uh, X and Y move will do. Um, also, we can come up into our click and we can start using the click to to add those positions. So if the button that was clicked is the right button, we're going to say this dot position is equal to this dot handler dot get mouse manager dot get mouse position. <clears throat> and we're going to set another one. Oh, and we don't need this dot position. We're just going to set it to var position. And we're going to set our waypoint equal to, and it's going to be x will be pose dot x plus this dot handler dot get game camera dot get x offset and the same thing for y will be position dot y plus this dot handler dot get game camera dot get y offset So this is where we're going to, this waypoint is going to be the object that we can actually pass into our paths array. So we should be able to just say this dot path dot push waypoint. All right, so again, we're, we're getting the mouse position. We're adding to it the camera offsets. And then we are pushing that new position into the uh, array, which causes the length of the array to be greater than zero, which will cause him to run this function. Once the array is, or once he reaches that goal, or at least 10 pixels um, to the goal, he will then, uh, he will then run the else, which splices that current waypoint out of the array, which can cause him to which could cause it to be empty and stop the character. Um, at this point, that that should be enough to get him moving. Let's see what we have right now. Uh, follow path is not a function, and that is 27. This dot follow path follow why did I follow path. All right, so if we move here. Get mouse manager dot get inputs is not a function. That's player line forty one. Handler dot get mouse manager dot get oops get mouse position. I just hit tab I think and that's math. It has to be capital. And where did we put that in entity on eighty five? So we do have to use math. With a capital M. Did I do that anywhere else? Alright, so if you look, he's moving where we want him to, but he's off to the left. So we also want to take that into consideration. So up here in our player, when we're adding this position, this waypoint, let's also subtract from that this dot bounds dot 
x. Uh, actually, this dot bounds dot width divided by two, or let's center it to the let's center it to the actual graphic. So this dot width divided by two, and same thing for y. Let's subtract this dot to height divided by two. Let's see if that positions him a bit more center to where we click. It is a little bit off of center, but that could be just our graphic there. So it's off because it's just the picture is a little off. Um, we could use probably the bounds because I think I've centered the bounds. Uh, but I'm gonna I'm gonna count this as good enough. So he's gonna move wherever we tell him to. Come down here. So you can see because right now he's actually colliding with these entities, he rolls off of them. Now there is times where you're gonna get stuck with this method. So like if I come over here and I want to go down here, he's not going to be able to. And that's where that stop comes in. So if I come over here and he gets stuck, he's going to keep trying, but then he'll stop. And it's about a half second of actually being still. So we've got him moving, and I think this is probably the last tutorial before I implement the A-star uh, pathfinding algorithm. We'll start doing that in the next video and it should kind of come in and work pretty nicely with this path thing that we got going on. Because right now he's he's following paths, uh, an array of paths, to the point where if I click here, then there, then there, then there, then there, he's gonna follow the paths that I've clicked because we've just pushed them into the array now if he stops, instead of stopping, he should go to the next path. Bam. So it, he only stops completely when all of the paths that you've inputted or, ha, or input have been exhausted. So we can just keep clicking and he'll keep trying to go wherever we click. And if he can't, at this point, he just moves on to the next position. One thing that, you know, one thing that I do want to do if I come into, I believe it's the player. Yeah, if we come to player, I'm going to change the way that he, just the way this is. Um, we're going to change it so that he kind of, depending on which way he's moving, uh, we change a little bit better the, the way that the, the animations are. Because right now, it kind of doesn't look the greatest. So I'm going to say if x move is greater, uh, less than 0 and math.absolute this.x move is greater than math.absolute this.y move. And what this is going to do um, is this is going to make sure that we change him to the walk left animation if he's moving left and the left his movement to the left is greater than the movement on the Y. So I think we may even be able to get away with, um, we may even be able to get away with not having this and only doing that. And I think we can copy this. You know what? We wouldn't use math.absolute. Now, we'll, we'll leave this in here. We'll copy it. We'll paste it right here. And we will switch it around. Oh, no. We will leave it. And we'll do the same thing, but in reverse. So we'll just reverse this here. And here with that reversed. <clears throat> so let's see 
with that logic what happens so he's walking up but he's also walking to the right but he's walking to the right faster so it caused him to okay and if I walk down up down at an angle he's still walking down over now he's okay so with this logic he he kind of turns and uses the closer to the correct animation now if we had more animations like a diagonal then that would probably be better but this is good enough to get the job done so now when he moves around he's using the correct uh, or closest to the correct animation all right cool I will see you guys in the next video where I will start the pathfinding algorithm see you guys there